Guys, it's gonna be a big egg day today. Lots and lots of eggs here. This is actually a head albino ball python. Ooh, she's a little feisty monkey right here. But she's actually bred to an albino clown ball python. So she definitely rolled her eggs all over the place. So we're gonna to have to candle them to make sure the embryo's on the right side. These four eggs were absolutely perfect, so that's really good. Go ahead, get these in the egg box over here. And then we'll start to collect these other eggs. Let's see what we got. Got a little bit of a damp spot on this egg right here. Not the best situation. We're just gonna go ahead, get these eggs. We'll go ahead, candle them afterwards. We'll get mama all cleaned up and she'll be great to go. So you're gonna produce albino heifer clown. You're gonna produce double heifer albino clown with this particular breed. So it's pretty cool. All together, eight eggs. Can't complain about that. So one little weird one right here and we'll candle these four to get them going. But they should be good in 60 days. We should have babies. And candling is just basically taking a flashlight and looking for the embryo. That little circle on the top right there, that's the embryo. You see, it was actually turned right upside right down. The air sac is actually attached to the egg. That's where the actual embryo is gonna breathe. The find air sac bubble that's attached right here. You can see the embryo. You can see the network of veins. Absolutely perfect. So we got that one right. Let's see what we have here. It looks like the same thing. Looks like this is 100% upside down. You see the air bubbles right here. You can actually see that little black dot right there. That's actually the snake's eyeball, believe it or not. And then there's the one egg that is a little bit wonky. But it happens to be upright. It's got nice veins and stuff like that. This one should have. Take a look at this. This is another black headed python clutch, which is amazing. We actually had one that just started to hatch. And this girl actually bred a little bit later. And it looks like she's got a beautiful clutch. This egg here looks a little bit wonky. See, look at this actually, though. You can see the embryo actually moving around in there. But that wet spot I don't like very much. What I'm gonna do is set them up on a hatch right over here. And hatch right is basically perlite that has a water isomer in it so that it's not damp to the touch, which is really important with black-headed python eggs, as well as the fact that it'll keep the humidity up. Where are you going, mom? She's being a good mom, too. She's not trying to bite me or So anything. these are giant eggs. Look at how big that egg is right there. Ginormous here. egg. So it looks like we have three in this box here. So, okay, we'll get her all cleaned up and get her ready to go. She's gonna be happy. We've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight beautiful black-headed python on eggs. Now these guys hatch in about 60 days. Where are you going, mama? Mama, girl, get on over here. You're okay. So about 60, 65 days from now, we're going to have maybe six, seven, eight more baby black-headed pythons. Wow. What a year it's been. From producing no black-headed pythons to hatching near a dozen. Yes, I still have the occasional normal ball python around. It's they're just nostalgic, right? Like, it's kind of cool. This was actually bred to a pretty cool male. Looks like she's got some beautiful eggs on it. Let's check the boy out. See an Enchi Lemon Blast Extreme Gene. So basically it's got Enchi, it's got Pinstripe, it's got Pastel, it's it's got extreme gene in it, so it should be some pretty nice babies. Back to mama, we'll get her all cleaned up after this. Typically what ends up happening is just before they lay, we don't really mess with them too much. The last week or two before they're due to lay, we don't clean their cage unless it's really, really messy. This girl unfortunately has some slugs. These are five infertile eggs. They obviously look very different than these eggs here. These are infertile. Why they're infertile? I'm not 100% sure. Sometimes it's the female, sometimes it's the male, sometimes it can be temperature, but uh, it does happen. So far this year, we've had really good success when it comes to fertility. We really have two, four, five good eggs right here. So basically it was a 50-50 clutch. We had 50% of the eggs, 50% infertile. infertile. If he's in the incubator, they'll be ready to cut in about 57 days. And more eggs. That's right. This one is actually really interesting. Ooh, she's leaving the eggs, but look at how pretty that is. That's actually an enchi female. Holy cow, that thing. Ooh, don't bite me. It's okay, girl. She does have a couple slugs in here, but overall the clutch looks pretty good. It's going to kind of move her off her eggs. Like I said, it looks like we've got just three little sluggers right she's here. She's actually bred to a dragonfly vanilla bamboo. So that with this enchi is going to be ridiculous. Again, we're going to get mama all clean up and she's going to be really happy and she's being a good protective mama she's doing really good but she hasn't bit me which is really nice looks like we got a bunch of really beautiful eggs here let's go ahead and set this aside for a second again we always see whoa come on mama whoa, whoa. hey now calm down once we get her cleaned up and bathed and stuff like that she'll kind of lose that egg defense where she's just she's like being a good mama right she's trying to protect her eggs and that's completely fine four six seven beautiful eggs right here lots of potential combinations i mean you've got just tons of stuff that's like seven different genes that you've got going into each one of these eggs so we could produce some really Really wicked stuff here. Another 57 to 60 days. Take a look at this girl. Literally, she's just finished laying. I mean, literally a minute ago, I checked she out. She had it. one egg left in her. This is actually an Enchi albino head for clown. Right to an albino clown. So everything should be albino. And there should be half of them should be clown. Then we can have half of them Enchi, Enchi clowns, Enchi albino clowns, all kinds of stuff. And what a beautiful clutch eggs. And look, you can see this is so fresh that you can still see the embryo and veins through the egg itself. That's the egg that was just laid. Literally seconds away. Whoa! You see her just take a little pop at me? It's okay, girl. She's just trying to protect her eggs. She's saying, don't you take my eggs. I've got to be careful because I don't want to get bit by her if at all possible. This egg kind of moved. No, 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 no. It's okay. Whoa! She, oh, gosh, she's a feisty little monkey right there. So I can see the embryo right here. It did roll, but we can just set that right on top right here. We know this egg is good. And because these are so fresh, we know that the embryos are on top. And also, when they're really fresh, you can tear them apart really easy. Look how easy these eggs come apart. They're very pliable. They actually stick together and they 
stick together so that they don't roll around, right? Because again, if an egg is rolling, it's gonna actually potentially drown. Four, six, eight, nine gorgeous eggs. Oh my gosh, that's a beautiful clutch of eggs. More ball python eggs. This is a great clutch here. We had actually the same clutch last year and I produced some crazy babies. This is actually a Cine Lesser. Love it. Good eggs, absolutely incredible, but it was bred to a Super Lori Leopard. That's right, Super Lori Leopard bred to a Cine Lesser. The clutch last year, we had like five eggs last year and they were absolutely crazy. Every baby was crazier than the this other one. This is also the one that we produced the white snake, the black eyed leucistic, which is really unusual because it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Lorries have never produced leucistic. This is a lesser complex, which have blue-eyed leucistic, but we produced black-eyed leucistic from that clutch, one of them, but they were just crazy. But this year we have two, four, six eggs. So we have one more egg than we had last year. I'm telling you, I was excited for this clutch. I'm so happy that they're all firm. This is a good one here too. This is actually a double-head albino clown, yellow belly, bred to an albino clown. And that albino clown has been doing good. We've got a couple clutches from them and they've all been really fertile. They're doing good so far this year. I don't want to jinx myself, but wow, I tell you what, our fertility is good we had that one clutch earlier that was 50 50 and a couple other slugs but the majority of the eggs that we've been producing this year have been fertile which is just absolutely incredible and again this is going to be some cool stuff here because if we could do some albino clown yellow belly something i haven't really seen i think it'd be really neat right let's go ahead and get these in the box here probably move this one egg right here looks like these have laid pretty quickly so they're coming apart super easy so i'll just put that right there and look at what we got we got two four six eight nine gorgeous eggs I tell you what, this year started off awesome. This is actually a pinstripe female, a really beautiful one, really reduced. It was bred to a banana GHA Mojave. I remember when we hatched the banana GHA Mojave, I was so excited. So this combination could be pretty interesting. This is the first clutch that that male ever fathered. So let's see if they're fertile. Absolutely fertile. We looks like we've got a couple little slugs, a little bugger here, and one little bugger over here. And then we've got a boob egg as well that looks like it's got a little bit of a, a nodule on it on the end there, but we'll take away this slug right here. The rest of the clutch looks really, really good. And like I said, I was super excited that this male actually fathered a handful of clutches. It looks like he's going to father, but this is the very first one that it did. GHI Mojave Banana Pinstripe. Absolutely incredible. We have two, four, six, seven eggs. Okay, this is the first clutch that we have from our mimosas. This is actually a het for ghosts, and a mimosa is a ghost champagne, right? So half these should be actually ghosts, half of them should be champagne. The combination should get some champagne ghosts and stuff like that, which will be good, which are called mimosas. Looks like a beautiful clutch of eggs. Look at that. Oh, one little slugger here, which is completely fine. But boy, oh boy, that is a beautiful. That's what you want to see when you're pulling clutches of eggs. We'll get all these females cleaned up here a little bit later. We'll usually give them a little bit of a bath kind of get the egg smell off and I can tell these ones were laid really recently too. just by the feel that they have so I can separate them super easy because they're not really dried yet you know what about I mean 10 or 12 hours after they're laid they dry out it's kind of hard to separate these turned out really good we've got two, two four six eight nine and one slug I tell you what what a day of collecting eggs guys I mean this is just the beginning we've got a long long way to go and think of all the cool babies we're gonna be hatching in less than two months it's not just python eggs that we have but we actually have some colubrids well actually just one clutch of clubers, but this is actually a het for pastel pink hognose snake. So it's a Western hognose snake. Look at mama. She looks great and she doesn't look too worse for wear. A lot of times when these females lay eggs, they look really beat up, but she actually looks pretty good. Take a look at her. She actually looks really nice. Almost looks like she could lay another clutch of eggs anytime. Now we're not going to do that. And she's actually bred to a pastel pink, which is this right here. This is actually the pastel pink. It's a type of albino, but it's not the red or normal albino or orange albino. It's the most common. It's actually something different. Another type of albino. When you breed pastel pink to normal, albino or orange albino whatever you want to call you it. actually won't produce albinos you'll actually produce double heads so let's go ahead and see how many eggs this girl has again this is just sphagnum moss that we have here just to keep the eggs a little bit moist after the you know the little nest right where they would lay in the wild which is at the base of trees or something like that with some rotting wood or litter or something on that line and then we're putting them in hatch right which of course is the perlite water isomer and that seems to work really well with hog dogs. and oh there's a bunch more eggs look at that's a pretty good clutch of eggs but not that big of a female let's see if there's any other eggs in here here or if that's it like i said she looks really good she'll definitely double clutch oh there's one more egg hiding right over here they do that that's weird about hog no snakes they'll actually kind of uh lay kind of all over the place so you know most snakes lay in one spot but that's why you got to always really really just bag the moss after you're done to make sure there's no hidden eggs i've had that happen where like a week later i come back and there's an egg in the box we've got two four six seven beautiful eggs now hog nose hatch in about 45 to 50 days so these guys hatch pretty quick so we're gonna have little babies we're gonna have pastel pinks and ha pastel pinks hatching from it's pretty awesome i'm what a day for eggs hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos you can also hit that subscription button it would mean a lot to me also hit that like button while you're down there have a wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you in the next one